And let's get up to date. We'll go to a call of the card from Ian Dark talking to Peter Bromley. Number one is Count Parlin, who at least has won at Epsom. Yes, the live outsider. He's about 25 to 1 at the moment. He won the Blue Ribbon Trial Stakes at Epsom. He's tough. He's very, very genuine. He's just lacking a little bit of class, although he did win the Futurity last season as a two-year-old and showed great courage. Courage, I think, is his hallmark, and he won't be giving in. So I think he, you must put him in the first six. Trained by Bruce Hobbs, number one, Count Paul, and then we come to Father Rooney, representing Barry Hills, and ridden by a man very much informed, Steve Corson. Well, Father Rooney is uh, slightly inexperienced. He showed that when he was second to Super Sunrise in the Chester Vars in May. He ought not to have been beaten that day, but soon Super Sunrise took him close home and he couldn't quicken. Uh, I don't really fancy him very much. Now, what about Fitzwarren? I suppose uh, the same thing would apply very much an outsider. 250 to 1 is on offer. And the, about the same price, Florida Sun. In fact, I think you can get a bit more about him. Florida Sun is a wild outsider, and he finished last to simply great in the Mechadanti Stakes. I think his chance is remote. So if you've drawn those two in the office suite stakes, uh, well, hard luck. But then we come to another one where you'll be rather lucky if you pull this one out the hat. Number five, Golden Fleece from Ireland, ridden by Pat Eddery, trained by the great Vincent O'Brien, owned by Robert Sanks. The Golden Fleece must have a superb chance, Peter. Yes, unbeaten in all his races, the winner over a mile as a two-year-old, and he's won the Ballymore Stakes at the Cairo, he won the Nijinsky Stakes, showing tremendous acceleration and completely outclassing the opposition. Because he's not sure what he beat, really. We may be overestimating him because uh, of the caliber of the horse that he's beat. But a third came out and won after he'd beaten him, so I think that form looks pretty good. He's by Nijinsky. He has impressed everyone who's seen him here at Epsom, and I think he has a favorite's chance, no doubt. Yes, Golden Fleece is the favorite at the moment. Uh, just a question mark, though, as well, isn't there, about his temperament, Peter? Well, uh, he, he was apparently difficult to load up in the horse box, which prevented him coming last year to take part in the futurity. But he's here, and he's safe and well, so that, that, that is behind him. Well, then we come to uh, number six, and this is another of the leading fancies, Jal Mood, who's owned by the Defense Minister of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed, and ridden by a man who knows all about Derby wins, Willie Carson. Yes, and a very good winner of the Lingfield Derby trial, and he quickened up nicely to beat a non-stayer there, Mr. Fluorocarbon. Earlier, he'd been beaten by peacetime, but too much shouldn't be read into the literal form of that race, because John Mood was very backward when he ran, and he can only improve after those two races. He has a real chance, and he must be in the first three, I think. There we are, quite a recommendation for John Mood. Then we come to Lobcombe. Uh, that one representing that always optimistic trainer, Clive Britton. Yes, never afraid to take on the best. And Lobkowitz will probably lead for the first mile, and then that's the last we'll probably hear of him. And then Norwick. Now, this one is uh, trained by Guy Harwood, but uh, I would have thought, Peter, that uh, he won't like the ground being this firm. He could do with a few thunderstorms no, over there. I think he like a, like a little bit of more give, and he's been a disappointing horse this year. Well, let's move on to uh, Palace Gold. This one's second to simply great in the Mecca Dandy Stakes at York. Yes, and uh, the useful guide for, for judging the relative form of the horses that Simply Great has beaten. But, of course, Palace Gold is still a maiden, and maidens don't usually win the derby. Well, then we come to uh, peacetime. I know you fancy this one a great deal, Peter. Ridden by Joe Mercer, looking for his first derby win. I must say, I fancy peacetime a great deal myself as well. What do you think? Yes, I liked him when he won the Guardian Classic trial. I thought he had the hallmark of a, of a, of a classic winner when he won that race. I was... Um, really um, in consternation after I heard that he was copying. But I was delighted to see him win the predominant stakes in Goodwood. So I think he's back on course. There must be a slight down. There must be the break in his uh, interruption in his, in his training may have affected him. But judging by his win in the predominant stakes, he's back on course. Peace time, probably my selection. Mm, I would have thought he might win as well. He just looked as if he was uh, maybe a little workmanlike rather than classy, that win in Goodwood. But as you say, he was only 90% fit. Let's move on to the French cold Persepolis, and there's been an absolute flood of money for this one. Well, quite rightly so, but he won two important races in France, both written by Lester Piggott, the Prix Noir in April and the Prix Lupin in May. Prix Lupin, a very hard race to win. By Calamoon, a very tough horse with a clutch of class and a turn of foot. I don't think you can keep him out of the first four. Replay, 
lead, Philip Baldwin? 100 to 1. He won a maiden race at Bath in May. No, no real derby form now. And a lot of people have been writing nice things about this one. Rocco Maduro, which finished fourth in the 2000 Guineas. And you know what they say, fourth in the Guineas, first in the Derby. Yes, but his pedigree doesn't exactly give you confidence. But he's a tough sort of horse. And he could, there's going to be a surprise. It could be Epsom's day. And Rocco Maduro might be the one to create a surprise. Written by Shergal's jockey of course, Walter Swinburne. And then uh, one I like as an outsider. Got a temperament problem, but uh, smart form. Silver Hawk. Yes, he was uh, unfortunate in the, in the 2000 Guineas. He was drawn on the wrong side, and that really put pay to his chances. He ran pretty well to be fifth, but I didn't like the way he took the preliminaries. He was very sweaty. What about Super Sunrise, the one left that could have been on, but of course it's ridden now by Eddie Hyde. A tough outsider of this, and uh, will certainly stay. He'll be running on when lots of them are finished, but uh, I don't think he just quite has the edge of class, but he's a tough egg. Mm, maybe wanted a little bit further than a mile and a half. Then Tidworth to two, Brian Ralph. 100 to one about him. Touching wood, the next one down is 33 to 1. I quite like him. He could be a useful outsider. He ran peacetime close, uh, getting quite a bit of weight down at Goodwood, and is clearly improving. So he could have improved sufficiently to close that gap. And wherever peacetime is going to finish, well, touching wood won't be that far behind. And last of the 18 runners is Wong Choi, who I seem to remember running very, very well in the Craven Stakes a few markets. That's right. He was uh, right up behind Silverhawk, only a length and a half behind him. And he seems to run in all the big races and run extremely well but there again he just seems to lack that little bit of acceleration where it matters that was peter bromley talking with ian dark doing the call of the card for you and it's interesting to look at wong Choi to be ridden by david brosnan an australian jockey based in hong kong he's having his first ride in a derby and he had a look at the course yesterday and remarkably enough you'd think there'd be some local support for uh, wong Choi, but on the New South Wales TAB, he's the rank outsider in the field. And if he happens to get up, he'll pay over 200 to 1. The pre-post favourite on uh, totalisator betting here is Golden Fleece, which is showing spot on 3 to 1. And uh, Golden Fleece will represent a tremendous triumph for Sangster and uh, the trainer, Vincent O'Brien, if he's able to get up. He's won his last three starts, and with Pat Edery, up in the saddle, he must be a big chance. The others are close to him in the betting. Jal Mood, uh, Willie Carson is at nine to two. Peace time, well favoured there by Peter Bromley, with Joe Mercer trying for his first win in the derby, is at six to one. Persepolis, ridden by Ibsen Martin, at seven to one. They're really about the only four under double figure odds at this stage, with most of the money going for Golden Fleece. But We'll be finding out a lot more about the race in a few moments from now when we go over to the course and to Peter Bromley.